I'm delighted to say we've been joined by Matthias Hearn, director of Cockneys vs Zombies. Now we've had many zombie movies over the last kind of decade. Where did you get the idea to have zombies fighting Cockneys? Well, I've always been a great horror fan, um, and especially I loved zombie movies from the when from when I first watched on VHS uh, Peter Jackson's Dead Alive or Brain Dead, yeah. and. Um, you know, our parents weren't allowed to see it and we were passing around at school illegally. <laughs> um, and what I loved then was just this sort of anarchic, fun, gory bonanza that Peter Jackson cooked up and it sort of stayed with me ever since. Mm -hmm. So um, when I came into to making my first movie, I always had that sort of in the back of my mind, but really it sort of happened. The idea came about when I was working with a couple of Cockney actors right. who... Um, on a web series were up against vampires and it was so funny they only had a side role but it was so funny they were stealing mm. the show and taking over the, the whole project in a okay. way and I thought well you know what no one's ever seen you know Cockneys in a supernatural horror movie before at mm. the time and I thought it was amazing because tonally they wouldn't be the normal horror victim they would, wouldn't kind of go oh what is it <laughs> oh, in 20 minutes, ah, it's zombies. They just go, oh my god, it's fucking zombies. Now what? Ch -ch -ch, bang! And blow them away, and they would not, you know, let their guard down ever or never really be faced by mm. oh, it's zombies. They just get on with it and kind of deal with them like they have with everything else, like the Zulus and the Old Bill, yeah. <laughs> um, and anyone else who tried to invade East London. So, how easy was it to kind of finance and bring, get the production going? Because it was in development for quite a while before James Moran came on board as writer, wasn't it? Absolutely. I mean, I think it took a while to get the script right because while the high concept was sort of very, the high concept was very um, memorable and easy to sell. Yeah. I wanted to make sure the script is living up to mm. to what it could be, and I just went through a few drafts with a few you know with a few writers before James Moran became available. Yeah. Um, because he was very busy. Um, and when he came on board, he really just gave it the, the big sort of final boost and made the script what it is now, which mm -hmm. is, you know, a sizzling, fun ride of a zombie movie with swearing cockneys. Well, I think the other good thing about the script is that you kind of avoid the kind of stereotypes of cockney gangsters. And, okay, some of the characters are robbing the bank, but they're doing it for the right reasons. Was it important to have kind of characters that the audience could really relate to and... Uh, and like. Absolutely. I wanted Cockneys vs. Zombies to be a character driven horror film, yeah. which is just that you really feel for each one of these characters and really yeah. understand why they're doing it. I didn't want to do a Mockney kind of film or yeah. you know, do something geezer rich where everyone's just sort of posturing without having any soul. And I think um, having lived in Hackney for the last 15 years, mm -hmm. what I kind of was really latching on to is that you know, the old Cockney values of looking out for each other, looking out for your family, having building a small, tight community that mm -hmm. kind of holds together against whatever life throws at them. Those kind of values have been sort of got, getting lost in East London, of course. Yeah. And I wanted to make this film about you know, the old, gritty East yeah. London values of sticking together and kicking anyone out who tries yeah. to invade their turf. And of course you've got Alan Ford yeah. playing Grandad. I mean, the role was written for him, is that right? Absolutely. So the role of Ray McGuire, the, um, the um, loudmouth granddad who's sort of um, holding the film, or, you know, who's at the centre of the film, was definitely written for Alan Ford. Yeah. We kind of looked at his um, past work and the um, Ianando Inucci um, um, uh, sort of little comedy skits he was in. Yeah. And um, he, luckily enough, he said yes. And the other kind of older actors that you've got in the film, uh, Richard Bryan, Dudley Sutton and Honor Blackman, I mean, it looks like they're having so much fun making the film. I mean, how was it working with them? And were they kind of trying to outdo each other when they were shooting their scenes together? It was a real revelation working with the old actors because some of them had sort of worked together back in 1962. Right for the last time. And they were so happy to just be in a room together again and bounce off each other and, and, and kind of do a real ensemble scene together. Yeah. But they were just literally, even in their breaks, just sitting there doing their lines and pinging back and forth and fine tuning the scene. And they really um, brought so much vitality and professionalism and you know, 50 years of experience yeah. to the role. 
that you know everyone was kind of in awe and inspired by them. Someone like Honor Blackman, who you know at her age, literally, she um, I gave them a couple of weapons to choose from for yeah. a pension. Um, home outbreak and there was you know egg whisk spoons knives and she said to me Matthias I want the sledgehammer like, <laughs> that's great she's sort of strong mm -hmm. and then of course Richard Bryer is, um, is a comedy genius and yeah. he made just every moment sizzle on screen it's so funny um, he was a legend of course he also gets to handle a 9mm Uzi which <laughs> might be the first time on screen yes. <laughs> and um you know, Alan Ford needs no introduction. Tony Selby, Dudley Sutton, mm -hmm. all great kind of faves from, from yeah. 70s TV. I just love bringing out these old characters. Georgina Hale, she was mm -hmm. um, um, in what's it called? Uh, The Devils, yes. um, which, you know, all great, great people to work with. Um, I mean, there's so many great scenes with, that are set within the Bow Bells home. Did you have a particular favourite scene yourself? To me, the scene that really made me very excited about the script and about the movie as, as a whole and really holds it together was the slow motion Zimmer frame chess. Yes. Because in a way, it's one of the core concepts of the movie is yeah. the zombies are slow, but the pensioners are slower. Yeah. And um, that really holds it together for me. Talking about the zombies, you seem to have a huge amount of zombies in the film. I mean, how many extras did you have and did you have any problems kind of shooting on the streets at all? We had um, about eight, nine hundred extras, which, um, which was fantastic. And a lot of them were fans, a lot of them just loved to be a zombie. Yeah. And uh, everyone got a great Facebook photo out of it. And we had an army of makeup artists behind yeah. the scenes working on, on their makeup, which was great. We had a, a zombie walk video, which taught them how to walk, <laughs> a specific shuffle. And, um, and it was great. And to be honest, also what I really tried to make sure is that the, the zombies represented, to a certain extent, the kind of archetypes of the area. We've got like hoodie zombies, we've got football fan zombies, um, and, and really try, try to bring out the character in the zombies, because I, I love zombies. Yeah. And I love about zombies that you kind of, they're evil and they want to eat you, but at the same time you feel really sorry for them, mm. because they're just shuffling around, they're not really sure what they're doing, all they're feeling is like a hunger and a pain but they can't really quite make sense of anything. Mm -hmm. And that's what I, I love about zombies. I try to bring a little bit of humanity to the zombies as well. And I mean, for a 15 certificate, the film is surprisingly gory and violent uh, and also full of swearing. I mean, was there anything you had to kind of cut or were you kind of self-centering yourself as you were going along or did you just film everything and just cross your fingers and hope the BBFC would let it go? Well, we had a conversation about the 15th certificate, mm. and really, um, the only thing you, we couldn't do was use the C word more right. than twice. In the end, we actually didn't use it at all. We had it written in once, yeah. but it just felt, because the film had so much heart, it felt like we don't really need to go there mm. um, and use the C word. Yeah. At the same time, during editing, um, we did a fuck pass. Um, and the fuck pass was taking out some of the random swearing right. that was in the film and we cut around 50 fucks and then <laughs> left about 120 in there maybe um, and that was good, it just focused the drama yeah. a little bit more but it just felt it should be a loudmouth movie because it just adds to the mix it's a, you know, it's a it's the family coming together mm. but they're swearing and robbing banks and they're shooting and they're killing zombies but it's sort of a warm movie at its yeah. heart. So it just felt to me that you'd want to op offset the warmth of the drama yeah. with, you know, lots of swearing yeah. and shooting. Okay, and just tell us how Chaz and Dave became involved with the film as well. Well, we, um, right from the beginning when we brainstormed what should be in this movie, we yeah. kind of said, well, we need to have a Chaz and Dave gig in this one. <laughs> and, um, and unfortunately, they split up at the time mm. and while we were shooting they were doing a, a reunion tour so they weren't around so we, yeah. we had, didn't have Chaz and Dave in the film but they kindly recorded a, a, a genuine song for the closing titles which is called Head to Head with the Undead by mm. Chaz and Dave and, um, and that was amazing. That's a <laughs> terrific song and people can actually download that scene. It'll be out on Head to Head with the Undead will be out on I think iTunes mm. 31st of August.
Right. Same goes for the movie. 31st of August, yeah. it's coming out. Everyone should go and see it first weekend. And Support British films. <laughs> the, and the film's just been selected to play at the Fantastic Fest in Austin, Texas. How do you think the kind of Cockney rhyming slang is going to translate to overseas audiences? What I was really surprised about when we first screened the film in America, I was very apprehensive and mm. thought maybe they won't get the language, won't get the jokes. Yeah. But they did. And it was great. I mean, it was such a great atmosphere, the first American screening. Yeah. Then we had the trailer go public, and actually there's lots of Americans kind of commenting on it, liking mm -hmm. it, and lots of YouTube discussions about it. So I, th I think it's going to play very well in America. I just heard that it sold out um, Fantasy Film Fest in Berlin as uh -huh. well. Um, so it, it really feels like people actually really want to go and see the film, yeah. which... You know, it's great because, uh, you know, we worked so long and hard to make it special. Yeah. We, we really wanted to give Cockneys vs. Zombies something that you haven't seen in a zombie film before, that you yeah. haven't seen in a horror film before. Give it a big heart and give it all the other thrills and set pieces that really make it special and worth your while watching it. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's got its premiere here at Fright Fest today. And there's some connections with the other film shown today because I believe Paul Hyatt actually worked on Cockneys vs. Zombies and John Wright uh, you collaborated with on Beyond the Road. So, I mean, are you catching up with those guys later? Have you seen their films? Absolutely. I have not seen Grabbers yet, but I look mm. forward to it. Um, John's coming to Cockneys as well, yeah. which is great. Um, Paul Hyatt is a legend, of course. Um, I, I can't wait to see Seasoning House. Yeah. And um, not only is he a gent and an amazing prosthetic artist, he's also great director. Mm. Um, so it's a small world and it's yeah. nice to see that um, a small community of people is coming together and all making their, their films. Mm. They're all interesting. So I guess one final question, what else are you working on at the moment? Okay. <clears throat> when it comes to talking about what's next, I'm, I'm going to keep very stumm and very coy until solid announcements can be made. But um, I'm working on a science fiction project in the States and I'm working on a fantasy story here in the UK. Okay, well, Cockneys vs. Zombies opens in the UK on the 31st of August. We wish you all the best of luck with the film. Matty Sen, thanks for joining us. Thank you for the interview and I look forward to the premiere because the film is made for the Fright Fest audience. Thank you. Great.